Él fue a llevarme a casa means he went to take me home. I want you to see the difference uh, of meaning uh, when we use indefinido or imperfecto, ¿ok? Él fue a llevarme a casa with pretérito indefinido. He went to take me home. Now look at the change at, in, the, in the meaning if we use pretérito imperfecto. Él iba a llevarme a casa. He was going to take me home. See that these two both are the verb ir, which means to go. The verb to go, ir. Only that here it is conjugated in pretérito indefinido and below in pretérito imperfecto. Él iba a llevarme a casa. He was going to take me home. Él fue a llevarme a casa. He went to take me home. So, as you can see, the first one, it, sounds, it suggests that something really happened. Right? He, he actually took me home. The second one suggests that something was going to happen, but eventually uh, may have not. Okay? Él iba a llevarme a casa. He was going to take me home. Okay? Good. Ellos vinieron a Uruguay. Let's see another example. Ellos vinieron a Uruguay. Again, we are using the verb ir, right? Which means to go. Okay? This time, the, the subject is ellos, which means they. It's the third person in the singular, in the plural, while here, in the first example, it's the, f the third person in the singular, he, okay? Therefore here, the verb is conjugated in the plural. Ellos vinieron a Uruguay, they came to Uruguay, okay? Ellos iban a venir a Uruguay, they were going to come to Uruguay. You see the difference? The second, as I mentioned before, it suggests that uh, the, it, uh, the fact we are talking about uh, may may have not actually happened, okay? So, okay, uh, now the next example. Ana llamó a su novio. The verb llamar, this time it's uh, to call. In Spanish, when you say llamar, it can actually be call or phone call, okay? Ana llamó a su novio can be Ana called her boyfriend or Ana phoned her boyfriend. Now, let's add uh, the verb ir to the, to the sentence. Ana fue a llamar a su novio. Ana went to call her boyfriend. Ana went to call her boyfriend. In Spanish, you add the preposition a, to. So, the structure in Spanish would be Ana went to call to her boyfriend, okay? So that's the, the use, the function of the preposition a. Now, instead of using pretérito indefinido, let's use pretérito imperfecto. You'll see how it changes. Ana iba a llamar a su novio. Ana was going to call her boyfriend. Ana was going to call to her boyfriend, okay? her boyfriend. So again, see how by using the by using the pretérito imperfecto, it suggests that the whatever we're talking about may have not happened and when we are using the pretérito indefinido, it suggests that it did happen. Ana went to call her boyfriend. Okay? That's a fact. Now, look at this one also. Ana llamó a su novio. Let's try to change uh, the verb llamar, which here is in pretérito indefinido. Let's switch it to pretérito imperfecto. Ana llamaba, okay, a su novio. Okay, so the verb llamar, which is to phone or to call, now is conjugated in pretérito imperfecto for 
Anna for the uh, the third person in the singular. Okay. Now look how interesting. Anna llamaba a su novio can be translated in English as Anna was calling or was phoning her boyfriend. Okay. So see how by uh, by conjugating this in the imperfect tense, in the pretérito imperfecto, it's as uh, what we could, would call in English the past continuous, right? This would be like Anna was calling or was phone phoning her boyfriend, right? Past continuous. Now I show I show you another example. Um, Let's, let's try this sentence, okay? The first one. Él me llevaba a casa. Okay? Él me llevaba a casa. Llevaba is the verb llevar, to take, right? In the imperfect, imperfecto. Él me llevaba a casa can be translated as he was taking me home, right? He was taking me home. So again, you can see that the imperfect mode here, the imperfect tense, is used as uh, past continuous, okay?